Hey everybody, Joel here. Hope you're doing well. I am doing absolutely phenomenally awesome. Uh, today I want to share with you some pretty cool stuff. Let me just close this so it doesn't echo. Uh, let me grab some notes. And, I, and uh, today is a very heartfelt story, but very, very educational. So stick around to the end because the education I'm going to give you today is what completely and utterly changed the direction of my life. I was going to get a good job, get a good education, become an engineer or become a government worker or become a, go into the military, whatever, because that's what my mom wanted me to do, right? Um, so yeah, let, let me start there. Um, first and foremost, most of the people around you are going to call you insane. They're going to call you crazy. They're going to laugh at you. But again... Look at those people who call you insane, crazy, and laugh at you. Uh, look at their lifestyles, you know, and ask yourself one question. Would you, right this second, trade lifestyles with those people? And the, if the answer is no, then stop listening to them. It's very hard, very, 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 very hard to get out there and get rid of the negativity around you. Remember, 95% of the population, I won't say is negative, but have very little belief in themselves that they can dictate their own life. Why do I know that? Because it's statistically true. 95% of the population today do what? They work for the 5% of the population. So it, that, that's, you know, that's point number one, is it's hard to find the 5% of people. So here's my story. I was a very sought out personal trainer uh, in Ottawa, Canada, which is the capital of Canada, because a lot of CEOs, a lot of busy people loved the efficiency of the workouts. The first part was I looked amazing. OK, um, I looked great. So people are, you know, that's that, you know, number one, be a product of the product. You got to look good. You got to feel good. Um, now, does that stop you from starting a business? No, you leverage myself and you leverage any uh, success that you've seen so far, if you lost a pound, celebrate it. If you lost 10 pounds, celebrate it. If your bench press went up, celebrate it, okay? But I always wanted to, let, let me stick to the story so that this doesn't go too long. And I promise you, this is highly educational, which is centered around truly the secrets of a billionaire mind. Now, no, I'm not a personally a billionaire. I'm still working on it. But I had the pleasure because I was so sought after and so well known in Ottawa, Canada, to do the personal training for Dr. Michael Copeland, who was the founder and CEO of Corel. He also helped found other companies like Nortel and Mitel and many, just an uber smart entrepreneur. Okay. So I was invited to his home to do his personal training. And I was in my little Eagle Vista. I was still going to college or university in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, so I had no money. And the first thought that I want you to wipe off the table, okay? Any self-made successful individual, self-made, are very nice people, okay? I'm not talking about the son or the daughter who uh, kind of like married into or who had parents who were very successful. Some of those people don't appreciate the hard work that went into it because they take it for granted and they can be kind of arrogant. Every, every person that went from nothing and made something out of their own lives are extremely nice people. Why is that? Well, are you gonna do business with somebody who's not nice? Of course not. If you don't like somebody, you're not going to do business with them, right? So uh, the key is, um, I got there, I was nervous as hell. Um, you know, my little Eagle Vista, they've got $4 million in cars in the driveway. I look at this 35,000 square foot home and I'm like, holy cow, right? And it's all glass. It's all mirrored glass. It's all mirrored glass on the outside. It's all white marble on the inside. And I'm not talking like marble slabs. Obviously, there was some sort of slab, but these slabs were like 40 feet long each. It wasn't like little tiles, right? So I knock on the door and I'm shaking and I'm nervous. And I remember distinctly thinking, I don't, and I'm going to be, keep it real. I don't care. This is what I thought in my head. I don't care how much this rich prick uh, pays me. Uh, I'm not going to do his personal training. Met the guy, did his first training. I stayed at his house that day till about 10 or 11 p.m. drinking Dom Perignon with him all day. And I know why is he just liked my excitable attitude, my 
anything, you know, uh, go get it attitude, anything's possible attitude, let's make it happen attitude, uh, all that kind of stuff, right? So as we became friends, as I did more and more and more of his personal training, of which he paid me a hundred bucks to go over there for an hour. It was like pretty cool, right? Especially when you're still in college, like a hundred bucks. Yeah, of course I'll come over for an hour for a hundred bucks. So um, the, the, the thing was, I was still, because I was bullied in high school and my mom was the most wonderful, loving mother on the planet. I miss her every day. This February 25th will be four years that she's been gone. She passed of lung cancer. She was a smoker. She quit 10 years before passing away, but, you know, it just caught up with her. I miss her every day, right? And because she was so wonderful to me as a young child, protective of me, uh, my dad was the entrepreneur, but my dad also loved my mother. So when I would go to my dad and say, dad, you know, mom wants me to do this, this, and this, he would be kind of neutral and say, listen, just do what your mother says. And so that's what I did. But I knew that's what wasn't for me. I, I didn't want to be an engineer. I didn't want to work for somebody else. I didn't want to have somebody dictate when I could take a holiday or not take a holiday. I wanted to be the captain of my own life. I knew that from, you know, young as young as young could be. Okay. So that's, that, that's the thing. You're not necessarily as much as somebody can be loving protective, amazing in your immediate family, in your best friends, in whatever. They may not think like you at all, okay? Uh, I just got like a weird pop-up on here. So let me make sure. Oh my God, I'm getting some weird pop-up on my... Just let me cancel this. Let me hope. Let me make sure I'm still live, guys, because I got some weird, weird pop up on Zoom here. Uh, maybe I lost my internet connection. I hope not. Let me hope that I'm still live. Sorry about the delay. Uh, looks like I'm still live. Uh, let me see. Am I coming through okay? It looks like I'm coming through okay. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I got a really weird pop up that the meeting had ended. So, anyway. Here's what I learned after we became very, very good friends. The first, one of the first thing that I asked him in my perception was, was he must be smarter than me. He must be, you know, he just must be a better person than me. You know, he must have like a photographic memory. He must have an IQ of 10 billion, whatever. My perception was he had the success that I wanted, but I wasn't going to be able to get that success because I just didn't have it in me what he had, right? Right. And I remember asking him, I said, Dr. Copeland, you must be a really good programmer. He's like, uh, I don't know a damn, a damn thing about programming. And I'm like, well, isn't your PhD in computer science? And he's like, uh, no. And so, you know, what Corel started out to be, he goes, I just saw a vision and I found the right people to work with me on that vision. And way back then, what Corel was, was it took, you know, you used to have clip art that you would like, I mean, we're going way back to the late 1970s, early 80s, where there was no digital medium to get clip art for advertising and yellow pages and stuff like that. So that's what the first version of Corel was, was a bunch of clip art that you could use in a digital medium, print them off and put them into your advertising and stuff like that. And so he just saw the vision of that. And he was like, no, I, I don't know anything about programming. He goes, I've, I, I've partnered myself. I've found the right people who are good programmers. I've found the right CFO. I found the right people. He goes, I'm just the creative person. So that was the first thing that really, really caught my mind. Here, please pay attention. Because I remember thinking it was rude. It was odd. It was crazy. And then I asked him because we were friends. I didn't feel uncomfortable about this. One day I pull up to do his personal training. And his wife and himself were, were very big humanitarians centered around uh, rescuing animals. So needless to say, they had many, many dogs, cats, and whatever else that they had rescued from shelters. So I got to his house, and on the way to the gym, there was an obvious puddle of pee on, on the white marble. So it kind of, you know, it kind of spread out really far, and it was probably you know, at least three to four feet in diameter, and you couldn't really get around it, you know, and um, he jumped over it, and he goes, oh, do you mind jumping over that, and I, I thought that was so bizarre, 
he didn't even go to the kitchen and grab some paper towel and put it on the pee to at the very least soak it up. He just jumped over the pee like it was nothing. He wasn't even embarrassed. I was embarrassed at the, I was embarrassed for him that there was a big, huge puddle of pee in the middle of the floor. Right. And I was really perplexed by that. And, and this is where the real true secrets of a billionaire or a millionaire or successful mind came in. And I remember asking him, I said, does that not bother you? He goes, why would that bother me? It's just pee. I'm like, I still didn't get it, right? He goes, Joel, I can't afford to put my mind on anything other than the things that I want it to be on. So he's like, well, one, I have four nannies that work in my home, you know, 35,000 square feet. They'll, they'll get to it. It's their job. I pay them for it. Uh, so I can't afford to worry about anything than what I want to focus on. So it could be business. It could be his relationship at that moment. Whatever he wants to focus on is what he focuses on. And believe me, folks, after running a business for 20 years now, I so get it. As an example, I focus on what I feel is the most important things that I can do every single day for income generating activities. And at the moment when I want to turn off the income generating activities, because you still have to find, find a work family balance, um, I'll do so. But as an example, I thought for sure, for sure, all of our bills were on auto payment. Turns out my gas bill wasn't. Now, we just had the most major freeze. I sent an email about our supplements going out late, and evidently it wasn't. So I didn't even pay my gas bill. It got shut off. It's not something that I pay attention to. It's not something that I want to pay attention to. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's the thing, right? I, you have to focus your brain on income generating activities and away from minimum wage activities. So as an example, him taking the time, and you'll get it one day, folks, him taking the time to focus on cleaning up the pee when it wasn't his job um, just wasn't worth it for him. And me focusing on whether my gas bill was an, an automated payment, I thought it was or it wasn't, it wasn't, oh, well. Wow not the end of the world, right? So that's the thing is don't waste a second, a second of your time on things that you personally don't want to focus on, okay? And you know what you like to do, what you not like to do, right? I don't cut grass. I don't do dishes. I don't, um, I don't do a lot of things. I don't do a lot of things. And it's not because I'm lazy. That's obvious. Uh, it's because I understand wholeheartedly that I need to focus on the things. Now, some of you might be in a position where you have to do your own dishes. I get that. But get them done and move on, right? So that, that's very, very, very important. The other one is don't sweat the small stuff. Like I said on my thing here, okay, I forgot to pay my gas bill. And so I had a little block heater and I was working away anyway. So what? Big deal. At the end of the world, right? Um, and so, you know, it's the same thing as him jumping over the dog pee. I, I remember the first time I, I thought it was so offensive. Like, you, you, you have a guest here, me, and you're just going to let the pee just sit there all over the floor? And he did. And, and I 100% I get it now. And I'm harping on it because I hope you get it too. Focus on what you know is important. Okay. Set daily goals. He always set daily goals. And he, uh, the, here's the only difference between him and 99.9999% of all of us. Every single one of us, you included, if you've never made a penny, every single person on the planet has a million dollar idea every single day. I hear people around dinner tables, at bars, at parties, talking about how they're going to do this or do that. And guess what happens? A big fat zero. Nothing happens. Nothing. Zero. They don't do anything, right? Two epiphanies in my life that happened with Dr. Copeland, where I saw that he took massive, massive action. One is I advised him to start an affiliate program with Corel, because one of his complaints was, uh, you know, being a multi-billion dollar company, they're only doing uh, back in the 
I guess early nineties, whatever it was, must've been early nineties, uh, $5,000 a day online in sales. You know, back then you would go to a store, you would buy the DVD or the CD-ROM and install the software. So I said, well, why don't you start an affiliate program? Why don't you uh, set something up that if people come to the website and uh, people send traffic to your website and if they buy one of your products, which was Corel Draw, Corel Word Perfect, many, many software products, you pay them a commission. And he rem I remember him saying, oh, that's stupid, right? And he goes, that's so stupid because if you don't take action on that idea for me, I will. Three days later, three days later, he had me in front of the board of directors in Corel taking massive and perfect action. He asked me as a very young man to come and speak to his board of directors about how to start an affiliate program. Did I know the coding? No, but he loved the vision. He had the coders to do it. His board of directors decided against it, but that was my biggest epiphany. I had always told my mom I wanted to start an affiliate program online. I wanted to start a network marketing program online. And her gut response was always, Joel, you have no business starting an online business because your education is in cardiac rehab. You're being irresponsible. You have a daughter coming on the way. No, 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 no. And then the opposite was, oh, my God, that's the greatest idea I've ever heard. I want you to come and talk to my board of directors because they were a publicly traded company. And I was like, Hmm, 35,000 square foot home, 1,000 square foot home. I grew up in the 1,000 square foot home. I'm training him in a 35,000 square foot home. That was epiphany number one. Second epiphany, which was even more profound, uh, one day he was complaining that a lot of his developers were getting overweight. They were getting chubby and stuff because they were snacking and eating too many chips at the time. And this was my exact, well, maybe not my exact words, but at least paraphrasing that it was very short. And at that time, I was competing a lot and I was getting sponsorship from a uh, healthy nutrition manufacturer. I said, well, we could probably I, I have a company that could probably make you a high protein, low carb snack. And instead of your programmers sna snacking on chips, they could snack on a high protein snack. And he wanted to make them like a little Hershey's Kish size. It turns out uh, that the company couldn't do it. But that was the length of the conversation. Just a few seconds at the end of the workout. He said, wait, 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 wait. Came back to me with a check for like twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars. I had not, as a college student, seen that many zeros on a check before in my life. John Berger, who was my partner at the time, I called him after getting in the car and I said, "Holy shit!" I said, "I have a check here for thirty thousand dollars, and we have to manufacture a high-protein snack." It turns out that the company couldn't package it the way he wanted to, but uh, so I had to give him the money back. But again. That's where I realized he's no different than me. He hears of a great idea and he just wants to act upon it. Okay. Now you might say, well, yeah, well, he had $30,000, blah, blah, blah. There's always a way. Be resourceful. Okay. And that's the last thing that I realized, right? Is when I asked him, I said, you know, you must be a re, you know, if you've got a PhD in computer science, you must be a really good coder, a really good developer. He's like, my PhD isn't in computer science. And I forget what it was in. It was either engineering or something totally outside computers, right? And he's like, I just find the right people. I just find the right people. I work with the right people. I put the right people around me. The point is be resourceful. And that's all you need to do. You can be, you can be starting with Now Lifestyle or GVO today, literally today. And you might have your first downline sign up who says, how do I do this? All you need to do is use Google. How, you know, they might say, how do, I put, how do I put a fan page together? If you Google how to create a fan page, you'll find the solution. When I started in web hosting, folks, Google was my best friend. Don't forget, I was the level three tech. I was the secretary. I was the phone operator. I was the accountant. I was everything, but nobody knew that. They didn't need to know that. They just knew that I was a small company with high touch. You got to talk to the CEO when you wanted to. And I focused on my strengths. So starting an MLM, some practical experience, maybe you don't have a big downline. Maybe you don't have a downline at all. You just say, listen, I'm going to make this happen with or without you. And because my team is small, we can really work well together, right? Always focus on the positive, okay? Okay. In this industry, 95% of people are looking for help. Be resourceful and be the one to help people. And that's so easy to do by maintaining a positive attitude, 
taking massive and perfect action and getting a continuous education from the right people. Was I going to keep listening to my mother, even though I loved her to death? Or was I going to listen to Dr. Michael Copeland, who was a billionaire, right? I see so many people as well actually taking action, but because of lack of education, they take that action and that passion down the wrong path to absolute certain failure. Now, if you have the right education from the right people, they might say, no, 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 you got to let's veer this just a little bit. And that's going to bring you to certain success. So myself, I'm living proof. I'm not a billionaire. We've done hundreds of millions of dollars in sales online. Okay. But I still don't know how to make a web page. Um, I've learned and taught myself how to use my fan page by using Google. Um, I've gotten the right resources to put our websites up. I still don't know HTML, but I know the fundamentals of the vision. I know what our vision is. Our vision is to be a hybrid of online and offline, the first network marketing company to do online marketing and have great, tangible, amazing offline products so that both offline network marketers love us and online network marketers love us. And that's the vision. And that's what's most important. And that's why we're moving forward and growing so very well. So that are the secrets of a billionaire mind is focus on what you want to focus on every single day. Don't focus on the things you don't want to focus on. Jump over the dog pee. Don't forget to pay a bill. Not a big deal, right? Don't sweat that small stuff. Uh, Take daily massive and perfect action and get a continuous education from the right people. And finally, don't limit your mind to, well, I don't know this and I don't know that. I don't know web design. I don't know HTML. I don't know how to upload this or that or anything else. I've learned the fundamentals. I know how to write a good email. I know how to run ads. Uh, I, I don't even actually, I don't even run the ads on my fan page, but I know how to. I just don't have the time for it, right? It's, a, it's, it's an activity that I don't enjoy. Uh, and I know how to be decent on camera. That's it, Right. How many live feeds do you see me do? Why do I do them? Because it's an income generating activity. Okay. Get on video. Focus on what's important. Take massive imperfect action. Never give up. Surround yourself with like-minded people that you can learn from. And I guarantee you, folks, you will see massive, massive, amazing success. So listen, have yourself an awesome Wednesday. I was going to say when, yay. but That's kind of hard to say. So anyway, folks, have an awesome day. Love you all very, very much. Take this education. Take these tips to heart. Focus on them every single day, and you'll see massive changes in your life, in your business, and the people around you. Take care. Love you all, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.